in this video we're gonna learn how we can turn this cutscene into this using Cinemachine. So what we are gonna learn in this video is the bare minimum of Cinemachine. Just getting to know the tool by making a simple cutscene. You can use Cinemachine for some advanced camera behavior in your game but we are not gonna look into that in this video. If you want I can make another video about that topic just make sure you let me know by commenting down below. Hey guys, it's me Apurbo. Welcome back to my channel. So, without any further ado, let's start the video. I already have a scene open in Unity. It's the demo scene from Prometo Car Controller. I'll put a link in the description for this asset. I just tweaked the demo a bit so that it's ready for the tutorial. I also made an animation for the video. I know, I know, it's great, it's, it's, it's awesome, thank you. Now we are ready to add some Cinemachine magic. First thing is I'm gonna open the package manager from the window tab. Then I'm gonna click here and make sure it's in Unity registry. Then I'm gonna search for Cinemachine. There are two packages here, Cinemachine and Cinematic Studio. In my case, I installed Cinematic Studio because it includes Cinemachine as well as Timeline. Both of those are needed in this video. If you don't want to install the Cinematic Studio package, you can install Cinemachine and Timeline separately. Now everything is ready to start making the cutscene. The first thing we need to do is Select our main camera and add a Cinemachine brain to it. We don't need to change any settings here. We just need to add the Cinemachine brain to our main camera. Now what I'm going to do is find my first shot. First shot was showing the front of the car. So I'm just going to navigate there in my scene view and on the hierarchy I'm going to right click and under Cinemachine I'm going to create a virtual camera and as you can see as soon as I create the virtual camera our main camera snaps to the virtual camera's position that's why we need the Cinemachine brain in our main camera now if you take a look at our virtual camera component you can see there are a lot of settings here most of them we can just ignore for now first thing that we can look into is the price Priority. Let's say you have two or three virtual cameras in your scene. So which one your main camera is going to show? In that case, which has the bigger priority is going to be shown in your game view. I hope that makes sense. The next thing that we need to look is our follow and look at. Both of these take a transform and both of these are self-explanatory. When you give the follow a transform, it's going to follow the transform no matter what and when you give the look at a transform it's going to be looking at it no matter what and down here we have body and aim and as you can see both of these are giving us a warning for now because we don't have anything in our follow or look at so if you put a transform in follow the body is going to be handling everything you can tweak the body settings in order to fine tune your camera on how you like to follow your object and you can tweak the aim settings in in order to fine tune how you want your camera to look at your object. These are just the basics of Cinemachine. Hey guys, I just quickly want to say if you are enjoying the video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel in order to get more videos like this. Let's get back to the video. Now let's put them into play. So I'm just going to move my camera around here to where my second shot is and then I'm going to create another virtual camera and this time I'm going to do is put my car in the look at transforms position so that the camera looks at the car whenever it's moving now if i as you can see the warning on the aim section has gone because it has a look at transform i can fine tune my settings here as you can see if i play the game the camera is not switching to the second camera the camera is in the first camera's position because both of the cameras have the same priority so whatever camera is first on the hierarchy is going to be shown so there are two things that i can do here i can 
can select my second camera and press solo in order to only view that camera or I can just up the priority in my second camera so that the main camera sees through the second camera so let's just make the priority 20 in our second camera so the main camera sees through our second camera and now if I play the game as you can see the camera perfectly follows our car if I switch back to game view and open the aim section there are a lot of settings in here but I'm just going to show you the few settings that you need in order to work with Cinemachine so the first thing is dead zone you can see there are two dead zone settings or sliders here first is dead zone width and dead zone height both of these control this if I just increase both of them as you can see the preview in our game view changes so now we have a um, a square space in our game view so what this will does is if I just play the game and open the M section again as you can see what this is doing is there is a center or there is a dot in the middle of our camera and that yellow dot that is our look at target so wherever our look at target goes the yellow dot goes with it so the dead zone basically means if our object moves in the dead zone the camera is not going to be rotated if it goes outside the dead zone only then the camera is going to start moving as you can see if I just increase the dead zone a lot and then you can see the camera is moving very slowly because the yellow dot hasn't moved outside the dead zone now the second thing that we can mess around with is a damping sex so if I just increase the damping to its max which is 20 in my case and play the game and then open the aim section as you can see the camera now moves very smoothly so what damping does is it's gonna rotate your camera but with a smooth transition so without any damping what the camera will do is try to ma uh, match the fall, uh, look at target to the middle of the screen but when we apply some damping it smooths out the transition time between them so in my case I don't want any damping but if you want you can increase the damping the way you like the third thing that we can mess around with is the screen X and screen Y if I just you know play with the screen X and Y I can see some reddish border in my game view so what this is doing is offsetting my camera the middle of the camera or the middle of the two line has moved a lot so our camera is going to be now looking ahead a lot so what our camera is going to do is try to match the intersection of both of this line with the yellow dot if I just play the game as you can see before the car was in the middle but right now the car is on the right side of the screen because I increased the screen X and screen Y now I'm just going to put my screen X and Y to its default position because I don't want my camera to offset my game object so these are just a few settings in the aim section I encourage you to play with all of them mess around with them increase them decrease them see what happens and you will learn in that way a lot faster now let's find my third shot and then again create a virtual camera and this time let's give it priority to 30 to make it higher and also under the follow transform let's put our car there so that the camera follows our car now in our animation window let's go to where our car is in this position and now switch back to game view as you can see the camera is offset a bit so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to just click on this three dot and lock our animation so that when I select another object the animation state doesn't change now let's select our third camera this time I'm going to select the body because our follow relates to our body now there are quite a few settings here we can add damping just like before and we also have a sub air follow offset so let's put our Z to negative 5 and Y to 2 and I like this position so I'm just going to keep it in this position now you can also change X Y and Z damping 
but in my case i don't want any damping in my camera's behavior so if i just play the animation as you can see the camera perfectly follows the car so i don't want any kind of animation now this is the third shot in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move my scene view to here and and create another virtual camera and this time it's going to have a look at transform you just need to rinse and repeat everything in order to get the cuts in that i showed you at the beginning of the video so i'm just going to quickly add some virtual cameras around and make the cuts in that i showed you at the beginning of the video now all of the cameras are in place but we need to switch between them perfectly so that we have our cutscene in order to do that what we are going to do is we are going to use our timeline feature if you haven't watched my previous video on timeline i highly suggest you do because that video is going to greatly help you in this video i'm not going to explain everything in that video i have explained timeline in detail so in this video i'm just going to use the timeline and show you how you can easily combine cinemation and timeline to get a beautiful cutscene for your game in order to use timeline we need to open the timeline window for that what we need to do is go to window and under sequencing we need to open timeline i'm just going to dock the timeline window down here as you can see it's suggesting me to create a timeline asset so for that what i'm going to do is create an empty game object and call it timeline and move it at the top of the hierarchy so that i can easily see where the timeline is and then i'm going to click on create to create a timeline asset then i'm just going to give my timeline a name and a location and then the timeline will be created again i have explained all of this in my previous timeline video so the first thing that i always do when i'm using the timeline is click on this settings menu and then change the settings from frames to seconds it's already set in seconds because this is what i use seconds usually help me visualize the time or how many seconds or minutes taking the cutscene so the first thing i'm going to do in my timeline is right click and create a cinemation track now it needs a cinemation brain so i'm just going to drag and drop my main camera in this field now the second track we need here is the animation track so let's right click and select animation track from here and i'm just going to select my car and drag and drop it in here now on this side of the timeline i'm going to right click and select add from animation clip and then i'm going to select my animation clip i'm just going to adjust my animation clip to start at the beginning of the timeline as you can see if i scrub through my timeline it's working but the position is a little bit offsetted so what i need to do here is select the animation clip and on the inspector i need to remove start offset and if i untick that as you can see the car moves to its original position now let's add the cameras in the timeline so i'm just going to select my first camera and drag and drop it in the timeline and play with the positioning of my camera i want my first shot to end here so i'm just going to shorten my first camera's length and then i'm just going to drag and drop my second camera as you can see the timeline really helps switch between cameras very easily now i want my second camera to end here and the third camera starts from here and this is where i want my third camera to end and my fourth camera to start showing the object so i'm just going to rinse and repeat this same process in order to make my full cutscene as you can see if i play the cutscene or if i play on the timeline animation is working perfectly and the camera is switching correctly the shot is already looking great but there is an advantage to using timeline and cinemation together and that blending two cameras together so what do i mean by that so if i just go to the first shot and blend the first shot into the second shot as you can see like this and now if i play as you can see the camera smoothly transitions from 
the first camera to the second camera this is a great feature that you can use timeline and cinemation together to create robust cutscene for your game i'm gonna do the same for my fourth and fifth camera so that both of these blend together nicely and as you can see i have got the exact cutscene that i showed you at the beginning of the video now you, need, you might need to adjust and tweak some settings a little bit but you get the general idea on how you can use the timeline and cinemation together to create something beautiful there you go guys now you know the basics of cinemation and you can use timeline with it to create awesome cutscenes for your game now if you don't know how to use the timeline you should go and watch this video in order to learn how you can use the timeline for maximum effort and i will see you in the next video goodbye